Hello, the year is 2020 and it's an Olympic year and as a member of the human race, we're all members of the human race, we should get behind this uh, all-encompassing idea and it's something celebrating all those different nations, all those different flags. Each individual uh, nation has its special qualities which means that it can get gold or silver or even compete. So it's all about everyone being there together and all believing the Olympic dream. Now what I've been doing is I've been asked to help organize the swim heats of all the nations and I've got eight swim heats here and it's sort of based on a sort of a more logical viewpoint and this is grouping types of flags together you know all the individuals there. So to start off with we'll look at uh, the first set of flags that's Argentina, Nicaragua, Honduras, El Salvador, Haiti, Liechtenstein and the Philippines. I wonder how that swim race is going to go but you can see there's a similarity in the flags and this is what's really sort of caught my attention a little bit. You've got uh, the Argentinian flag which is a, uh, a bicolour which is blue, uh, the sun in the centre in the white stripe and then um, blue again. Now uh, there's a lot of suns in various flags so I'm interested to see how much the sun has cropped up. Um, we go from Argentina to Nicaragua. Nicaragua is uh, Unfortunately, I've got a little cheat sheet here, which I can see. It's a sort of a greenish triangle from this distance. It's a sort of a darker uh, blue. Now, the interesting thing, it's not the, sort of the, the striking blue, the heavy blue of the French flag. It's sort of a, a, a moderate blue, but uh, the Nicaraguan flag in the sun, bleached in the sun for a short while, or if you saw the Nicaraguan flag at one point pole and the Argentinian flag at another pole, you'd you'd have to stop and think. Now the Honduras flag has got um, five stars and interesting uh, uh, positions of these five stars in that they're sort of um, stretched out to fit inside the uh, white band so you, you get sort of the heaviness of the blue above and below. Slightly darker blue and Honduras is what looks like a little green eagle. I can't, uh, sorry that's, uh, uh, so Honduras has got the five stars El Salvador's got a little green, a uh, little sort of blue eagle or something like that. I can't see from this distance. So these are all in South America, or well, one's in South South America and one's in Central um, Nicaragua, Honduras, El Salvador. So they've probably got a, a common story here. What doesn't work is Haiti, which is an island in the Caribbean, and that's blue. Uh, on the top and red on the bottom, and Liechtenstein, a little art landlocked principality. Um, I think it's between Switzerland and Austria, I'm not quite sure. I think it's, I think it's their little place where people go, and it's got a little gold crown on the top. So some of the, I don't know if there's a king of Liechtenstein, I think they do have the uh, Athen there. So same blue colour. So if you saw um, those two flags together, that would be difficult to do. Added the Philippines just as sort of a since it's got this uh, the um, uh, the sun, the three yellow stars, a white triangle going in, basically blue and red again. Again, if you if the flag was not waving the wind and hanging on the pole, you mightn't see the white section because the the white is right near the hoist the hoist side. So that's our first heat. Our second heat is. Um, uh, more an African heat. Uh, it's got Egypt, Syria, Yemen, Iraq, Sudan, Palestine and Jordan. And these have the um, red, white and black. And um, uh, this is, must be uh, where I sort of first picked this up because I saw a news article showing Syria, then a news article showing Egypt, then Yemen and then as you can see, there'd be different news articles, and uh, I said, "Oh, they've got the same flag. You know, what's going on here?" And uh, people said, "No rubbish. This is you know, you're on the spectrum." But let's let's go into it. Egypt's got the red, white, and black. Red, bright, and black are the faint oh, colours associated for me with the swastika, the German World War II um, uh, symbol. And as a flag, it's the most sort of oh, powerful, sort of alien type of uh, symbol. 
you know, a, a, a sort of a, a clear symbol which has gone from the size of a, a sort of like having a letter A in the flag or something like that. It's like a letter in the flag. It's got a little yellow eagle in it and um, it's hard to say. I, one doesn't really associate Egypt with too many eagles but they must be there, must have been there. Syria's got two green stars, same thing as the Egyptians say. Uh, two green stars and um, it's sort of uh, hard to put a single star in that white, that white thing, uh, in that gap. It's hard to put something with a um, what's from a distance. As from a distance you don't see the edges of the stars. So uh, that's serious. That Yemen has nothing in the centre. So Yemen is the centre there. So it's probably indicative of some sort of Arabic movement. Iraq has some um, green writing and of course green writing at a distance is difficult to see. A green uh, is associated with Islamic viewpoints. Uh, again Sudan, uh, which is the top of the northern Sudan now, has the red, white and um, uh, black but it has green pennant in the inside. Uh, the green pennant in the inside is on the uh, hoist side is a sort of a fairly classic um, addition of an additional colour to a flag which doesn't reduce the impact because if you have too many uh, different colours, stripes, it's hard to tell uh, this way it sort of adds it to it, I don't know but if you saw uh, you know, um, dip uh, diplomatic cars going past streaming to the Olympic Games event and uh, they had the flags on the front of their um, little um, uh, Mercedes Benz. I imagine a black Mercedes Benz going past. You saw them. You'd you'd have to sort of know in advance whether it was Egypt, Syria, Yemen, Iraq, or Sudan. Then we have uh, Palestine and Jordan. Uh, Palestine and Jordan have in fact the same flag except Jordan has a little white speck, a little star in the side. Now um, as has often happened Australia has a, a flag with um, stars on a dark background, on a red background and occasionally we get an extra star there. You know you ask a student uh, and indeed there's the uh, we got an additional star courtesy of some bird life coming across. I'm not going to say anything about um, that with other nations flags so I might, might create a fence. It is interesting that these um, um, uh, countries are um, the uh, black, white and green. It's slightly different black, white and green with the red in there, the tricolor. These countries, uh, this Palestine and Jordan is bisected by the eruption of the Israeli state. So I don't quite, I can sort of imagine that being the original Palestine flag, the Palestinian flag and that's, that's changed from there. So that's the second heat. The next heat is the heat of green, white and red. Um, so remarkably we've got uh, roughly 210 or 197 nations up around there. There's I think 118 elements in the periodic table so it's sort of a collection of many but comprehensible level. Now the next level is the uh, green, white and red. You've got Mexico, Italy, Hungary, Tajikistan, Iran, Kuwait and Equatorial Guinea. So that's sort of a real great uh, combination in there. So Mexico is the green, white and red and it's got uh, indeed an eagle. The bird that you want to put up, very few people have a duck. Uh, I suppose we could have, uh, I think there's one which has a sort of a, or you've got the kiwi. But the eagle is the one that people tend to go to. It's always signified the top predator, I suppose. Italy, the same. It's got green, right, and red. I'm sure there's slight differences, but if you had the flag out in the sun for a while, and also, um, you know, this is this bleaches, it's uh, believed that the uh, US flag on the moon is now completely white. So sort of the flags that the UV radiation has bleached out all its colours. So if it was there, uh, sitting sitting on the moon, and it's uh, possibly being destroyed by micrometeors as we speak. But so there, you've got the colouring heat. You can the, you've really got to ignore the sort of subtle RGB 
variation that people put in because that doesn't uh, translate when little kids at school produce it. Now, uh, I would imagine that uh, an Italian who went to a Mexican restaurant would feel straight at home. Ah, I've arrived home. There's a bit more chili in this spaghetti. Uh, you know, where's where's all the pasta? Um, and they'd have to actually look across to a Mexican restaurant to actually see what's going across. Now, what I've sort of left out of here is there's flags which are similar by inversion or rotation. They're identical. So this. 197 flags, I think it is. Um, there's a large fraction of them which are just rotations or even identical across or identical with a small amount of difference. And it sort of means something to me in terms of it's something that you see automatically. It triggers your sort of sensitivity to, um, to patterns. However, uh, it also is sort of a good gauge because other people really respond quite violently when you you might talk out and say look those two cars are the same in the car park or something like that but if you mention countries flags it's a sort of a sensitive area but I'm on your I'm on the case for the Olympics so uh, Hungary is a uh, rotation uh, it's a quarter or 90 degrees um, anti-clockwise rotation, if you can do that then. You've got Hungary, Tajikistan, Iran. Hungary is the red, white and green. Um, again, I think France is stolen on the uh, primary colours. The primary colours give a sense of power. Green gives a sense of I say, homelandishness. And you, you put things down here. Uh, now, um, Tajikistan has a, some sort of yellow symbol with a, an array of stars above a monument. Sort of hard, hard to see from a distance. Um, Iran has a similar thing, but, uh, sorry, it's Hungary and Tajikistan are the same as flags. Iran is an inversion, that's a, a clockwise rotation of the Italian flag by um, 90 degrees. Uh, inside it's got a little, what looks from the distance is a red chandelabra. Uh, the selection of red there is far, um, is sort of, you want to put something red or green, but red, green or blue in the centre. So you put something yellow in the centre, it's, it's sometimes visually hard to see. Um, so you've got um, Iran. Now Iran has this a grading position between the white and the uh, the red uh, and it's from a small little uh, geometric uh, pattern. It's sort of a risky thing to do because you can it, it means that you see something up close range you can see the pattern at long range it looks as though it's blended so I sort of like that from a geometrical pattern point of view um, it's obviously in our world of where we want uh, your symbol to work as a fav icon up the top. You can imagine these flags as icons up the top of your browser you know, for different countries you've got up there so you have to tell the difference. Um, it, it sort of gets lost in the resolution so our sort of, um, it's sort of a, a very interesting world that we've got a lot of graphic design principles uh, given to our digital printing. Now we've got Kuwait. Now Kuwait now, uh, Hungary and Tajikistan are differently. Uh, Iran and Kuwait are uh, geographically close to each other. Now, Kuwait has its pendant um, trapezoid, I suppose, rhombus at the side. It's this black one. And I like that because of all the flags, it does have a three dimensional um, um, view. That black can look like the side of a wall and the, the white looks like a white wall at the back. It's got a three-dimensional aspect of it. I sort of like that. And I've sort of put the two together. Again, if you saw the Iran and the Kuwait cavalcades going past, or you saw their, their tanks going into battle or something like that, and you saw it of the pendant, you'd have to look very carefully going across. Equatorial Guinea is sort of a, a not really geographically close. That's in um, obviously near the equator, near Africa. It's also got the green, white, and red. It's got a triangular pendant, and you can sort of see the difference between the Kuwait and the Equatorial Guinea. You can have a good argument if you're the Kuwaitians, you can. Uh, um, the Kuwaiti embassy in Equatorial Guinea, or vice versa. It also has a small. Um, 
some sort of logo, some sort of crest in the side. Again, I can't see it from this distance. It's probably perhaps a good, good uh, going. So that's your um, the green, white, and red countries. So I've sort of um, grouped them together in terms of the um, the basic basic colouring principles here. And uh, this proceeds into the fourth heat, uh, which is the white, blue, and red heat. Uh, coming across here. Now for this I've got Paraguay, Netherlands, Croatia, Luxembourg, Russia, Slovenia, Slovakia. All are red, white and blue. Now, hmm, I must admit I don't know how many people necessarily have blue at the top of the flag. It's sort of strange they have red at the top of the flag. Probably the um, red sky and the blue waters. Paraguay has got um, uh, it looks like the Netherlands flag and in fact if you saw something between binoculars you couldn't tell whether you were being attacked by a whole heap of angry South Americans or you know clog cheese heads as they're called uh, um, castle cough I forgot what it's called the, the Germans have a name for the Dutch um, and uh, the really fascinating thing about Paraguay um, is it's a landlocked country it's sort of uh, sort of a globule up from Uruguay, Paraguay, Uruguay is up and it's between Bolivia, Argentina and um, Brazil uh, up amongst them. But it's got the most unusual flag of the lot. It looks so, you know, what could be unusual about it? It's got, uh, it's one of these, um, what you call them, um, oh, call them pseudo flags, para flags. You've got the Netherlands and you've got the Paraguay flag and the uh, you know what's the Netherlands is just the rotation of the French flag again the French flag rotated by um, 90 degrees okay that's okay but uh, then the Paraguay flag is the same thing so and in the center it's got a uh, I've studied this it's got you can't see it from here it looks like a, a, a sort of like a bit of soil or something like that from from a distance uh, but um, um, it's got a uh, sort of uh, some sort of um, lo uh, laurels, um, leaves around that side, and a, a yellow star. However, on the opposite side of the flag, it's got a, a the flag is a broken its symmetry, so to speak. I love this. On the opposite side, it's got um, I just have to remember. I think some sort of it's a bear and a pole, something like that. Yellow bear and a pole. I really can't remember it. Unfortunately, this is my memory. Going here, but what what's really struck me is that this is a flag, which um, it's um, different on both sides. It's sort of the one flag which is dares to be different. Of course, flags which have writing on them, inscriptions. Of course, the Iraqi flag. I I don't know would be asymmetric. I, I would expect the writing because it, you would just it's lots of like. The Iraqi flag, you'd have to read in an ambulance if it was back to front. So I'm sure it's, there's flags which break the symmetry, but it's um, it's different on front and back due to reflection. This one's different front and back because they've got a completely different design. They they had a competition, and I suppose, and it's different. So the Paraguay flag is really interesting. Croatia, uh, again, the Dutch flag. However, we're going. Oh my God, it's a Dutch flag. Let's add something very central European to it and this is a, a coat of arms you can imagine some sort of royal family coming across and it's the um, the checkered coat of arms and of course you imagine you couldn't have a checkered flag so it's sort of the ideal thing of putting the coat of arms in the center so you've got Croatia Luxembourg Luxembourg is clearly a much lighter blue at the bottom however it's the Dutch flag which has been out in the Australian sun for a while so if you were being attacked by um, a, um, a Luxembourg aircraft carrier and the Netherlands aircraft carrier were descending to you in Sydney Australia launching their stuff and you're working out what's going on you'd be totally confused because you'd, you'd be your eyes would be not dark it's sort of just say in dusk for instance if you, if you tell the difference so now um, the next ones are Russian, Slovenia, uh, Slovenia and Slovakia and I, I must admit um, I'm challenged in the Balkans as many people have been in the past and I could not really Czechoslovakia 
and Sl uh, Slovenia is in is, I think Slovenia is um, more in Yugoslavia but yeah it's just so and Yugoslavia's changed look it's making it really difficult you Europeans uh, thank you for making up countries and breaking them apart again but I'm finding it really hard to keep up with you all. Now this is white, um, blue and red is the famous Russian Russian colors. Again it's Russians the projection of power it's sort of good. I must admit I don't know I'm not too enamored with the white on the top because the white on the top looks so it's on let's say a cloudy day it's going past you can tell that if someone actually stole the top part of your flag. I, Look, I really don't. I find it a little bit disturbing to look at. Uh, Slovenia and Slovakia are really good uh, idea of putting in the um, uh, their crest in in reverse colours. So the blue is in the white, and the it's got white and the blue and stuff like that. Again, if you had these people rock up to, um, you know, they came up and doing a house invasion and you had to report to this, uh, the, um, the police you could easily report uh, accuse the Slovakians sort of of, um, of raiding your, your your home doing a home invasion and, and, and the uh, Russians are out back stealing fruit from your fruit tree and you'd give your report and the police would put down their pen and say get your facts right what were what flags were they having and you in your confusion you could easily get it wrong again it's uh, you can sort of see um, their paragraph in Netherlands it's sort of hard to put together the paragraph has got a sort of a large Italian content in it that's sort of uh, ex-European so you can sort of see that um, uh, yeah uh, Croatia how to put it together Russia Slovenia Slovakia the Slavic um, states you might have put it together now let's go down to the next one. So that was the blue, white, and um, uh, so the red, white, and blue there. Uh, and this is just leaving. This is things uh, flags you would have complexity if these people jumped in the pool and you saw the flags superimposed on there. Things you'd go, oh, who won? Next one is Colombia and Ecuador. Colombia, Ecuador is right next to Colombia. I've checked. And this is uh, sort of a yellow, blue, and red. It's sort of like the Russian flag, but blue and red at the bottom with your sort of yellow. Ecuador uh, is sort of like a bit carved out of Colombia, so I can imagine that there's a reason there. Uh, in fact, uh, the three countries at the cap of South America, which is Ecuador, Colombia, and Venezuela, putting across there, have this um, yellow blue red story so there's probably a historical reason behind it ecuador uh, again has a little logo in the center it looks like some sort of eagle that they've put 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 in there so that's um it's sort of an understandable thing but again it's not too helpful if you're planning heat swimming heats in the olympics next we have moldavia chad romania and andorra now this one is for me aspects really hard to, to try and figure out. Moldavia is a, um, uh, a state you want to really read about and understand because there's so little in the news. It was swallowed up in the Soviet Union um, and it's near to Romania. So you can one imagine that while Romania and Moldavia have the same flag, Moldavia has some sort of coat of arms. Um, sort of a coat of arms surviving through a communist era um, is is there it seems to be there um, Chad Chad is in Central Africa was there a Moldavian or Romanian colony or something like that but Chad and Romania have the same flag in fact if you're in the pool uh, being Chad and Romania and you were swimming you'd you, if you were smart Chad, a lad from Chad, the lads from Chad would slow down and let Romania win and then push them aside and uh, get the Chad national anthem coming up because you, you've got the same flag. Andorra is a little, I've actually visited Andorra. Um, um, 
yeah, a sort of tourist place between France and um, on the Pyrenees between France and uh, Spain. It has got a very large, diffuse red coat of arms, and it would be interesting. Obviously, the coat of arms uh, there doesn't have uh, rotational symmetry, so unlike the um, the Moldavian one where the eagle will possibly always heads will be looking towards the hoist. The Andorran flag is different. But you imagine those three, um, those four countries um, went in the pool, you just, I don't know, especially if you imagine the, um, the uh, fans, uh, that generally fans paint their face with the colours like that and they don't sort of say, oh my god, I've actually got to put an entire um, coat of arms as a sort of face mask in the centre. So that's, that's that colour. The next one is the groups of two by similarity, um, uh, which is heat number six. Uh, Niger, uh, India, Bahrain, Qatar, Australia and New Zealand. Now Australia and New Zealand famously have pretty much the same flag, unfortunately. Uh, I'll just I'll go on a story about that a bit later. Niger and India. Yeah, India, for some reason, I had every I knew about the central wheel of Indian independence movement. And again, look the um, uh, the orange, white, and green is just so many versions of the Irish flag. So the Irish flag gone through a rotation. So a Irish flag. Uh, sort of falling over on its back, so it's green, white, and orange it is there, but we're not doing rotation. So, if, if you had the rotation suit, so have uh, a reflection of the Irish flag, is the um, oh, it's central Ivory Coast. Ivory Coast is the Cote, Cote d'Ivory, maybe French. French, you could do, do that, but we're just sticking to flags which look conspicuously the same. And, and here we've got. Um, what would be um, eight by six, um, 48, 50, 50 flags, which are just just achingly similar. Now, what happens is everyone lives in a world where they don't spot patterns, and um, uh, they are a pattern averse, so they tend to put flags in alphabetical orders or or put heats together by. The, the, the swimming prowess, not about the similarity of flags, but you know, who knows, I might get on the Olympic committees and organize this event. So, so Niger's got a orange circle. I like the orange circle because it uh, is, can work at, at different, different distances. It's um, things which, um, if you've got these complicated bits of writing and stuff, that's good there. India's got the, the wheel, Gandhi's wheel, for, I've forgotten what the story is about the different parts of India, the spinning wheel and stuff like that. I don't know, because it was a spinning wheel, I thought it was made of wood. You don't see many blue spinning wheels, but obviously there's an aesthetic idea of getting the, the blue there. And so you, you see often Indian fans, cricket fans, getting daubed up and stuff like that. They could be from Niger. Um, Bahrain and Qatar. Uh, these are ostensibly different flags. Essentially, one's got five little teeth, the other one's got nine little teeth into the side. Both are in the sort of uh, Arabia, Saudi Arabia peninsula up there. Uh, different colours of red. I must admit, I find the uh, Qatar red or maroon the least attractive colour. It's a, a uh, a tertiary or a quaternary colour. So, a yes. primary colour's got um, red, yellow, or, or blue. In a secondary colour has a one to one ratio of red and yellow, or red and blue, or yellow and um, blue together. Uh, a tertiary colour's a uh, two to one ratio. A quaternary colours are three to one ratio. Then we have, of course, uh, the famous uh, P 
pair of flags, the Australian flag and the New Zealand flag, and they're notoriously the same. And often there's been a real prank being played where people come and say, raise the flag, salute the flag, and there's a big drum roll and the flag's unfurled and you know, the ceremony's halfway through and then they say, oh, uh, excuse me, sir, that's the, um, that's the New Zealand flag there. And it's a, you've got nothing, you can't continue the, the ceremony, you've just got to stop it and get it going through. Both, uh, both Baran, Qatar, Australia, New Zealand probably have a... a do definitely have a similar origins. Now we're going to do the uh, seventh heat, the red and white heat. We've got Monaco, Indonesia, Singapore, Latvia, Austria and Lebanon. Now Monaco and Indonesia have this, exactly the same colors. You put them side by side and you can see obviously depending on how it's rendered you get a slight different in hue but that's under machine vision um, obviously uh, Monaco and Indonesia if they decide to go to war against each other uh, I don't know who would win this particular war but you'd have a lot of difficulty of people shooting their own side and stuff like that uh, Singapore uh, fairly similar to Indonesia Singapore is a punctuation mark at the bottom of Malaysia and uh, uh, and the, across is Singapore, across the waters is, is not Singapore, across the waters is Indonesia. So they've obviously added a moon and um, stars. The moon, I think, would uh, be a tilt at the, um, the moon's often associated with the Islamic because of um, uh, Muhammad uh, had a lot of people fighting when they tried to do calendars so he, he had a observable start of the fighting season so that's when he would see the first sliver of the moon which has led to it being a, a um, often uh, a flag taken by Islamic countries they often have the moons in there I think uh, Turkey would be one uh, we then have um, uh, Latvia, Austria and Lebanon. Now Austria has the story of a king of Austria decked in white and he goes out to battle in the Crusades, gets wounds to the top and wounds to the bottom of his leg, blood soaks the top and bottom of his tunic and then uh, the story goes is that he had a flag and so he decided to hoist his, tu <laughs> his tunic up a pole. And this is as it's been told to me by an Austrian. I think he was an Austrian, okay. Look, most probably he was an Austrian. My only problem with the story is that if he's hoisted his tunic up a pole, he's no longer wearing the tunic. Obviously he probably had a second one or something like that. The story. Now, uh, the story, Latvia and Austria, Latvia's got a slightly darker red, smaller gap, but say you didn't see from a distance or things would cut off, it would be different. Lebanon, what I sort of like is increase this and it's increased big enough for a tree and I sort of like the tree is sort of like pushing the um, the two red bands and of course for people physicists who've been schooled into band gaps you can see the gap changing between the top and the bottom at places like that. So they're similar enough, enough in this sort of spectrum anyway to link with different things. We come to our eighth and final heat and that's between Lithuania, Myanmar, Senegal, Mali, Bolivia and Ghana. And this is the yellow, green and red uh, heat. Uh, yeah, well Lithuania, don't know how it got thing. Myanmar has got the white star in the centre. My only problem with the white star is the white, the top of the white star is going into yellow and so from a distance the eye has a little, or I think from has a little bit different seeing the top of the white star across there. Uh, again, uh, say if you had the Lithuanian, uh, Lithuanian and Myanmar, which is the new, uh, the old name used to be Burma, if you had these two armies, you know, just ignoring all, all um, things stretching across the Himalayas, getting to battle in the, the Caucasus or something like that, having a good old slam. 
who would know who's, who was shooting at whom because you'd have to be absolutely sure that you saw the white star. Of course, then we have uh, Senegal and Mali, and this is the yellow, uh, the green, yellow, red. Senegal has got a green star in the centre, and the green star is sufficiently large to fit inside them. So, with your stripes down, you have a, a, a broader band of yellow, a large star, which you can get here. Myanmar solved that problem by having the star so big it's actually stretched across. But Senegal's got there. Senegal and Mali. Now, um, uh, this yeah. is something on the, on the map you're sort of looking between these two, two things, and you say, oh, well, Mali and Senegal are in the same geographic, they, they share a border. So uh, this is probably an origin story, but if you were at the Senegal and Mali border patrol, you'd be going, which way have I crossed? You'd have to be absolutely damn sure that you remembered. Now you pick up your groceries at the green star place, then visit your, your mum and dad in the no star place, but then at the end of the night you go back you know, it'd be, be confusing and especially if you weren't that sharp you get you could get easily confused then finally we've got Bolivia and Ghana and Bolivia is a, definitely a landlocked um, uh, country inside South America so you can sort of imagine sort of South America almost as some sort of inside of an, you know the organs this internal organ so the uh, Paraguay is the heart so therefore you'd say Bolivia is probably the lung system or spleen or something like that. Uh, and it's got a little coat of arms in the centre. Again, very hard to see. Um, mixture I'm looking at here. Ghana is uh, over in Africa. So perhaps um, Bolivia and Ghana, perhaps um, the same people conquered both I don't know or slave trades from both Ghana's got a black star again so uh, again if Bolivia and Ghana had a war I know the Olympics games the theme has to be peace 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 but if they had a war it would be very difficult to go across so let's have a quick look at that and salute the world my only comment is that um, although we're convinced that all the flags are completely different and uh, people who have got a lot of time will get up in arms and say what are you talking about how if someone came from outer space and landed here and just looked at our flags and would sort of say oh you know at the end of it, after the human race was explained if they, they you ask them look do you space alien do you have any questions about the human race one of the questions might well be is why are all your flags so so similar? I don't know what your answer would be. Thanks a lot for watching.